So in a previous video, we went forward and solved the reactions of this frame. It's a two-dimensional structure with simple supports. And we went and solved further reactions, right? But now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and find the maximum shear and moment in this frame. And to do that, we're going to construct the shear and moment diagrams. So to get started, what I've already done is I've already gone down here and I've created a, you know, just some diagrams. And those diagrams are blank diagrams. All I really did was I took the loads that we figured out or the reactions that we figured out up above and brought them down here. So we know we still have these loads of 300 newtons per meter, 5 kilonewtons, uh, BX, which we solve for is 9.514, DY, and, and DX. So the other thing that I did here is I took these members and I sort of split them apart. So if we label these members, right, we have A, B, and C. And, and on this side, we're going to have C and, you know, point D. So these are our different points. Points, right, and that's consistent with all these. So you know this goes for A to C um, and C to D, right? And these members are just broken apart a little bit. And what that does, it helps us kind of get a frame of reference for where we're at. It also just helps us to break it apart a little bit so that you can see what's going on. Because anytime we cut a fixed or a rigid member here, what we know is when we do that, there's a lot of forces that happen to do that, right? If you were to try and take this and bend it apart, you you have some resistance, right? And and what that is, is there's a bending moment that's at this point, right? So there's going to be some bending moment at this point, right? In addition, there's going to be some shear, and I'll draw the shear going up. Um, it, well, on this beam, it's interesting because on this beam it's shear, but on this beam it turns into axial force. So axial force turns into shear, axial force on a vertical member turns into shear on a horizontal me member. And similarly, right, we might have like a shear here, which turns into an axial force and the opposite member. So it's interesting, but what we do know is that these forces, or, or moments in this case, are equal and opposite. So we might have MC. I'm going to label this one CX, and then I'm going to label this one CY. Okay? So those are the internal forces at joint C. And you'll notice they're equal and opposite, so CY goes up here. Uh oh, I made a mistake. CY has to go down here. Okay, so what do we have? See why up on one side, see why down on the other, CX to the right, CX to the left, moment that's clockwise on the right, counterclockwise on the left. So equal and opposite forces. Okay, so that's kind of step one is to realize that at this joint we're going to have some moment. So when we do our, yeah, our final you know, shear diagram here, it's not going to come back to zero exactly. It kind of will with the CX here, um, but in our, our moment's not going to go to zero because we're going to have some internal moment at that location. It kind of is like a cantilever beam. So what we want to do next is we want to define our local axes. So we had global a global coordinate system, but we need to define a set of local axes for when we when we do our shear and moment. And the local axes are important because they tell us which side is the top of the beam and which side is the bottom of the beam. So normally, you know, if we were just doing a one-dimensional horizontal beam, we would know that the top of the beam is here and the bottom of the beam is here, right? That makes sense, right? But what happens when you turn it 90 degrees? Well, is this side the top side or is this side the top side? So what we need to do is define a set of local axes, right? These are our local axes, which tell us which way X is going. You might say, well, why would you define it like that? Doesn't X always go to the right? Well, no. What we've done is we've taken our local axes right here and we've rotated them 90 degrees. So now this is kind of like this is kind of like X, right? So we have X, but we rotated it 90 degrees so it lines up. The X axis lines up with the member, right? So when we do that, now what that does, it says, okay, Y is up. So if you kind of change your orientation a little bit, you realize that all of a sudden we have the top of the beam here. In the bottom of the beam here, right? So we still have a top and bottom. And what I like to do is whenever I can, I like to try and keep my my X consistent, right? So the top is always on the top, the bottom is always on the bottom. It doesn't always work out like that, but when you can do it, it helps. So why does this matter? Well, we need to know which side the top and which side the bottom so that we can figure out which side is in tension and which side is in compression. Because when we look at our internal sign convention, right, our internal sign convention tells us where tension and where compression, you know, where each of those are. So if we look at an internal sign convention here, right, well, for trusses, what we said was, well, if we pull away on a truss, what's that? That's going to be the whole thing's in tension, right? Well, Similarly, for a moment, what we say is if we pull on the bottom and push on the top, right? So if you can picture this arrow pulling on the bottom, pushing on the top, right? We're going to say we're going to have tension on the bottom and compression on the top 
and that's going to be a positive moment. Likewise, we could, you know, come back into here and say negative. Well, what do we have negative? We have compression, right? We're pushing. It doesn't matter whether you're pushing to the right or pushing to the left. You're pushing on the member. Similarly, with moment, what we're saying is we're going to have tension on the top, compression on the bottom, right? And again, it doesn't matter whether the arrow is going like clockwise or counterclockwise, it matters where the tension and where the compression is, okay? So this is the internal sign convention that we're working with, and what we know is the top is the top and the bottom is the bottom, okay? So that's where, that's where our internal sign convention tells us where tension and compression is. Last thing that we have to do is we have to write in shear. So shear is right on the, uh, you go down on the right side. So uh, what I always say is remember to write down your sign convention, right? Write down shears, write down on the left it's up. And then the opposite side, uh, we can do the opposite, right? For negative, we do the opposite. But this is, this is kind of the internal sign convention. So if we were to look at, you know, this moment at C, right? We could see, well, that one, is is going to be on the right side of the cut, and it's going, um, it, it's causing tension on the bottom of the beam, it, um, and compression on the top. So on the right side of the cut, we have tension on the bottom, compression on the top. That's going to be a positive moment if that's what we work out to. So let's get started. And when we do this, I, I'm going to start, you know, down here, similar to what we've done in the past with the moment diagrams. And when we start at A, well, there's no low today, so we come until we hit you know, our, our one meter mark, and we hit this five kilonewton force. Well, that five kilonewton force now is gonna push us to the right, five kilonewtons, okay? And once that happens, I need to know now where positive and negative is, right? So if this is our shear diagram, and normally I'll label this like V and kilonewtons, right? Um, I need to label a positive and a negative side as well. So this is positive and this is negative. How do I know that? I know that because we set our local axes are gonna go this way. So positive is on this side, negative is on this side, right? For the, the shear. And that matches up exactly with what we're doing here. So we come down to a value of, you know, minus, five kilonewtons. So I'm just going to leave the minus five in there. Okay. So what we do is we come to minus five and then we're going to come up until where? Well, we're going to come up until we hit this, you know, this point load of 9.514, right? So we're going to come straight up and, and we're going to, now what we're going to do is this 9.514 is going to push us 9.514 to the right. I'm sorry, to the left. And that's going to bring us back to about 4.5. 514 okay so if I label this point here you know this is our 4.514 kilonewtons okay what do we do next well next we have to you know we have no change in load along the beam so we're just gonna keep going so we're just gonna carry this all the way up and eventually we know that CX is gonna bring this back home well we never solved for CX but if we did right what would we know well five in 9.514, we need another 4.514 to close it. So this is gonna come back to zero. So that's our shear diagram. And what we can do is we can shade it in and move on to the next spot. Well here, okay, again, what we've done is we know our local axes are going left to right. And what we wanna do is we wanna say, well, what's CY, right? Because as we move from left to right, we need to go up, you know, up wherever we see a force go up. Well, we've never solved for CY. So what we could do is we could come in here and we can say, well, some of the forces in the Y direction equals zero. We have CY going up, minus 3.6 kilonewtons coming down, right? Remember, minus 3.6 comes from 300 times 12 meters, right? This thing is 12 meters long. And 300 times 12 is gonna give us 3.6 kilonewtons, you know, plus DY equals zero. Well, in this case, DY, uh, it equals 3.6, right? So CY consequently equals zero, okay? So it's not a trivial result, but what it does mean is it means at this point, at CY, we're gonna start at zero. Again, we wanna label positive and negative, but what we're gonna do is, is since we're dropping 300 newtons per meter, we're gonna just drop straight down 300 newtons per meter until we get to minus 3.6 kilonewtons. And why is it minus? Again, our y goes, our local y goes up. So our, if we drop down, because this load is pushing us down, it's gonna bring us down to negative. And then what we do know is our dy is gonna pull us back up here. And let me draw that line in. So that's our shear diagram. And what I can do is I can shade this in as well. And next to draw the moment diagram, all we really have to do is go through and find our areas. So I'm gonna label these areas. I'm gonna go from kind of left to right here, A1, A2, and A3, right? And what I like to do is I like to find each of those areas. And then once I find the areas, I can find the moment. So I'm just gonna 
uh, carve out a spot here. I'm going to say, well, A1 equals what? Well, it's minus 5 kilonewtons times how, how far is this well um, what we know from the previous problem is that this distance here is two meters okay so minus five kilonewtons times two meters equals minus ten kilonewton meters okay and a2 uh, again this is just a rectangle but what we're gonna have is a, a height of 4.514 kilonewtons 4.514 kilonewtons times well this distance here and this distance is gonna be the remainder uh, of the beam length or seven meters Meters. So 4.514 times 7 meters, we get 31.6 kilonewton meters. And then A3, let's do A3, and A3 is just going to be a triangle with, with a 1 half times the base, which is going to be 12 meters, we already figured that out, 12 meters, times a height of minus 3.6 kilonewtons, and what's that going to equal? Minus 21.6 kilonewton meters. And I'm realizing I need some more room, so I'm going to take all this stuff and move it a little bit. What I'm going to do here now is now I'm going to go and find moments. And when I find moments, what I like to do is I, I just like to label points. So I'm going to find moment at you know, 0 0.0, 2. This is still going to be 2. And then I'm going to find it over here at 3. So when I come over here, I'm going to find you know this is going to be M0. Um, and then we're going to have like M. Uh, I'm sorry, M0 is going to be at this point. M1 is going to be here. Uh, M2 is going to be here. You might say, well, what's the difference? Well, this is where that 5 kilonewton starts, not at the end of the beam. At the end of the beam, it, there's zero moment. There's zero load, zero moment. Okay, so let me erase that. And what I'll do is I will label these now. I'll label this. This is kind of like what we have here is like M0, M1. This is going to be M2. And we want to find those. And, and M2 is going to transfer to this side of the beam. Remember, we said on one side it's MC, the other side it's MC. So it, it's the same moment and then over here we're gonna find M3 just so what's the first step well where do we start we know that we have M0 and M0 here is just gonna be equal to 0 kilonewton meters okay and that's because there's zero resistance to curvature at this point if you had a cantilever it might be a little bit different but as we go from you know kind of bottom to top of this thing if you if you if you'll think like left to right so to speak what we're going to do is we're just going to integrate the area or add the area so it's going to equal m0 plus a1 right so if m0 is 0 we're just going to have equal to a1 which we know is minus 10 kilonewton meters right and i'm just going to do this for m2 as well so m2 equals m1 plus a2 so what do we have minus 10 plus 31.6, we're going to get 21.6 kilonewton meters. Okay, so let's draw that in. So we're going to come up to M0, we're going to start at 0, we're going to go to minus 10, this is our moment, it's in kilonewton meters, okay, and then what we're going to do is we're going to drop right down to 10, it's a straight line, straight down to 10, okay. And then what do we do? Well, then we know our next point is going to be 21.6. So we're going to come all the way up here, and now we have a positive value of 21.6. And I'll draw a line in for that. And we can come back to zero here, and that's our moment. Right, so this is our moment. You'll notice here we have point loads, point loads, um, straight line shear. So straight line shear causes you know straight line sloping um, moment. Okay, so we can shade that in. And I almost forgot, but we need to label this point 21.6 kilonewton meters. Okay, so that's great. That's a first start. That's the moment diagram for A to C. Okay, so the next thing that we want to do is we want to turn the corner. And to turn the corner, I realize I need a little bit more space here, so let me move this around. And what we know, right, what we know is that when we turn the corner, this moment at C is going to be the same. So we go from 21.6 here all the way up to 21. 0.6 kilonewton meters here. Okay, so that's where we're going to start. And then we know that we're going to slope down. And if we do our math right here, we know that M3 is equal to M2 plus A3. So what does that equal? Well, if we start with 21.6 for M2, subtract off 21.6, this is going to go back to 0 kilonewton meters. Okay, so that's where we end up. Now the question is, how do we connect the dots? So let me draw a line in first, just connecting the two points. And what we know is that's one option. Another possibility is to have a curve that goes like this, and another possibility is to have a curve that goes like this. So which one's correct? Now this is a good time to stop the video and think about it for a second. 
So did you pick one? If not, stop it. Really stop it and pick one. Which one's right? Think about it, right? And when you think about it, think the height of the shear diagram is equal to the slope of the moment diagram. What do I mean by that? I mean the height or the value of the shear diagram is equal literally to the slope of the moment diagram. So pause it, think about it. Did you come up with an idea? All right, so what we know is the height of the shear diagram is equal to the slope of the moment diagram. So we know at point two, the height of the shear diagram is zero. So what's the slope? The slope is gonna be zero. The height of the shear diagram at, uh, at point D or point three is minus 3.6. So we're gonna have a negative slope here, okay? So automatically, that kind of highlights which one's right, okay? So we can delete these other two. And what we know is our curve is gonna come just in like this. So that's our curve, right? This is a curve. You can label it curve, right? And you can label these lines. And what we know is, is that's our curve, that's our moment diagram. And this can be shaded in. And from there, we have the answers to our questions, right? Well, what did we want to know when we started this? We wanted to know what the maximum moment and the maximum shear were, right? So we can just come in here and we say, well, the maximum shear, you know, Vmax is five kilonewtons, right? This is five kilonewtons. This is our maximum shear. Our maximum moment, Mmax, is 21 or 21.6 kilonewton meters, right? And those are our two maximum values. We solved the problem by creating shear moment diagrams. But first, what we did need to know it, it, to do that is, is we need to define our local axes. We need to understand our internal sign convention. And then we had to go about, you know, applying those local axes in the right direction so that we were able to draw the diagrams correctly. Hey, well, I hope that helps and starts you off on this journey of two-dimensional um, shear moment diagrams. Um, but, you know, feel free to drop a comment. But otherwise, keep working hard and moving onward and upward.